What you guys got another video here for you on upgrading and updating this uh, Dell Vostro 270S. This is an older Core i5 third gen um, processor in here. Now if you've got one of these older systems you might be wondering what you can do with it inside this case itself. So we're talking about it's being inside here. What can you do and what's the most you can get out of this little system? And there's a few things you can do. There's going to be some limitations and there's going to be some things you're going to need to do to overcome certain uh, problems that you're going to face when you're trying to keep this inside this case here. So the first thing you can do is upgrade the memory. Now I've got some memory here. You can put 16 gigs of DDR3 in here. You can pick this up pretty cheap and you can whack that straight in here. This has got eight gigs in and you can put 16 gigs in there. Graphics cards is a problem. As I said, I thought that the 1050 Ti will be a very big squeeze to get this in. And you can see this is a low profile card. It's the perfect length. You don't want any more than seven inches from here to here because of the CD-ROM drive inside here, the cage, there won't be enough room. This is the maximum that you can get inside here. So every Dell machine or every HP machine or Lenovo or whatever it is you're going to be using are going to have different problems that you're going to have to face. So with the graphics card, this is a 1050 Ti. This is what normal uh, people that have these sort of things upgrade to to play games. You can do this on the Dell Optiplex systems, on the small form factors and stuff like that. I'll put a video up here now so you can quickly see. Now this is a Dell Optiplex uh, 7010. Now this works well with the GTX 1050 Ti. It does work on here. Now just be very careful. The slot has different wattage on some of these versions and some graphics cards will not work with the Dell uh, machines. Okay, so you just need to make sure that they're compatible and they are going to run. Some of these slots are only 35 watts and you will run into problems with RX uh, 460s and 560s and things like that. But in these small form factors, the 1050 Ti should work well. So as you can see, it fits in there perfectly fine. But in here, you're going to have big trouble. It won't fit. It's going to be real, real tight. And the reason for that is because it's a wide card and also the slot is close to the bottom metal here. There is a, a vent here, which is ideal for cards. So I found a card that will fit in this uh, case here. You want to, what you want to do is you want to look for single slotted cards. This is a dual slot. It's wide, so you want a single slotted card. Now they do a 1030 single slotted card. You can also get 1650 single slotted cards. Um, but the problem is, it's the height. You need the height, watch the height. Because on some of these, you're gonna struggle. You can see here, this is gonna be okay. This sort of size, but it won't fit because it's a dual card. So you don't want much more than the height for this card here. So that's what you need to look for. And the 1030 that I see online, I'm not going to buy it. They're about 60 odd pounds and you can get them and they will fit in here. Now the problem you may run into is power issues. This is a 220 watt power supply. You can upgrade the power supply. As you can see on the screen right now, there's a 400 watt power supply, which will drop straight into here which is a much better option because it gives you more power. That's if you want to keep it inside this case. You're better off to do that because it gives you more power and it gives you more options on cabling and stuff like this. You can see there's only two SATA cables here, power cables. Now that gets on to the next part, which is upgrading uh, to a solid state drive. You've only got two SATA ports on the board as we mentioned in yesterday's video so if you want to upgrade this and get an, uh, an SSD keep the CD-ROM drive or rewriter and also keep the the large drive that you may have inside here it goes on the bottom very unique way of doing it uh, Dell are awesome at this sort of stuff and again this will fit inside like so but this takes up the two slots on the board they need power and they need SATA. So there is a way around it. 
and if you get the single card here, if you get a single card, slotted card, say 1030, that will fit in here and it'll be a small single carded slot. And there's a PCI Express uh, port here which we can use. And you want to use something like the, the card you can see on the screen right now. So this card has got extra SATA ports on it and you'll be able to slot that next to the graphics card. And you want to make sure the ports are facing on this side. The one that I'm showing you now is perfect. Some of them are like this and you won't be able to get the cables in because of the graphics cards there. So you want to make sure that you're getting the ones that have got the cables on here, the connectors on here, okay? And the reason for that is so we can get access to it with a cable. And this will give us an extra SATA ports for our machine. What that's going to do is allow us to put in a solid state drive like this. And then you'll be able to put a solid state drive and the best place for that is probably going to be down here. You can get some tape, some sticky tape or Velcro, and stick that right down there. And that will fit in just lovely. If you put that there, you'll see in a second, this will sit right back on there, and away you go. And you could even put another one on there if you wanted to they will fit there. Now they don't yield any problems like um, the, the heat on here will be dissipated from the case itself. They've got no moving parts in them so they'd be perfectly fine by doing that. And uh, that's a, a way around that solution there. You can, that's a solution for that problem there. You can just put them in either side here and run a SATA cable and a power cable. Now if you keep the same power supply you can see I'll put a bit of tape here already to stick that on a previous build that I did. Now, obviously, with these, you've only got two of these. So if you keep the same power supply, you're going to need to make sure that you either get a splitter. The problem with that is you're now drawing power on that same rail. They're on a separate rail here. And you, you could run into problems where it can't deliver enough power to do what you're trying to do there. You could discard uh, the, could discard the CD-ROM drive and do away with that completely and just use the um, solid state drive and the mechanical drive and this will just be a blank. You won't have nothing here. This will be blank. You could put something else in here if you wanted to but mainly uh, you could leave that as is. So really, they're your options for this particular type of uh, machine. Now, of course, there is different options available for other types of machines, so it will all be dependent on the size of the case itself. Now, if you're looking to take this out, which I'm going to do, and I will be removing this and putting it into another case and showing you and upgrading the power supply and all that stuff in another video, that's why I never bothered spending the money on a 1030 because I'm never going to use it. The same as this, I bought this and never used it and it's just stuck around. So um, th that's the thing, you're going to have to work that out for yourself. So it's not too bad, I mean what could you do with it? With a 1030 in there, you could possibly do a bit of gaming, some light gaming. Uh, you can also use it as an office machine, be perfectly fine. Uh, home theater PC, you can uh, get Plex on running on here. Anyway, that's basically going to be about it. So that you can see a lot of limitations here and a lot of restrictions uh, with this particular type of build. You can pick these up pretty cheap, but also there's a lot of expensive ones out there. Did a bit of research and there's ones on these which are going over £200. Don't pay £200 for these. You'd be completely mad. They're not worth that much. Uh, as you can see here, they're, they're still usable today. You probably drop lin Linux on here and have this as a, a, a nice little Linux machine with 16 gigs of RAM or 8 gigs of RAM, i5, perfect. You know, graphics card you can get, as I said, a bit of a lower end graphics card. Just make sure when you're buying your graphics that it's small form factor, low profile, about this uh, long, which is about 7 inches long, no wider than that really and just do a bit of research and make sure it's a single slot only uh, and then you should be okay if you're trying to go in any higher than that uh, then this case 
is no good for you and you're going to have to extract all of this and put it into another case. Now, would I recommend doing that? No, it's not worth it. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. That's going to be about it for this video. So that's basically how you can upgrade a Dell Vostro 270S. It's going to be pretty much the same for all the other Dell Vostros out there of this size. So hope that information is useful to you. Uh, and I shall see you again for the case swap, which we're going to take this all out and do a case swap for this. And I will actually do all of that, take it out and put it into another case and hopefully make a gaming machine out of it or something like that. I have got a card here which I can use, which is uh, something like this, which I bought. Uh, maybe use something like this, 1660 Super in it or something, and hopefully uh, do some benchmarks and stuff like that. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from BrightechComputers.co.uk. Uh, I shall see you again for another video real soon. Oh, one more thing I want to just point out here. We did mention about cables and swapping stuff around. People were mentioning that in the comment section. You can buy cables that are already created for Dells and stuff like that, like these, which are already got the proper uh, pin layout, which allows you to change, um, fa put fans in, use extra fans and stuff like that, if you wanted to do that. There's loads of stuff out there for Dells, which you can buy, which converts stuff back to the way it should be. Anyway, thanks again. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.